As a member of the Racial Unity Team, I welcome you to this fifth annual Art and Poetry Challenge celebration. We would like to acknowledge the physical connection to Nandakana, which is a traditional ancestral home of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge with honor and gratitude the land and waterways and the Alnabak, which means people, who have stewarded Nandakina, which means homeland, throughout the generations. I'm Nancy Sajano, a member of the Racial Unity Team and one among many planners who helped deliver the 2023 Art and Poetry Challenge. Thank you to the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen for hosting this awards presentation and opening exhibit. We are especially grateful to Sarah Naya. There's Sarah. <laughs> Sarah is the Communications and, Art and Administrative Director. And Miriam Carter. Is Miriam there? She's coming. She's coming. Miriam's coming. She'll be the tall lady that When the tall lady comes in, that's Miriam. And she's the Executive Director. And they have made this beautiful space available to the art and poetry exhibit, and we are so grateful. We also preach, appreciate Kelly, to E. Childress. She's the administrative director of the Racial Unity Team, and she's done a phenomenal job in setting up this exhibit. <laughs> to begin the Art and Poetry Challenge celebration, we'll explain a bit about the history of the Racial Unity Team. So let's get started by inviting one of the founders and the director, the I'm sorry, the chair of his board of directors, Ken Mendes. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. You know, I, I think about the Racial Unity team, and there are many people. I know of three founders right near. Back in, uh, sitting in the back is Pat, Pat, Ray, Pat Yosher, my wife Joy, myself, and two others. Uh, one has passed away recently, sorry to lose him, but I used to let him know that he kept me on the straight and narrow. He was a very fair person, he had a good uh, eye for situations, and he advised me very wisely in some of the decisions, especially in New Hampshire, where the last two years have been pretty difficult. Our history was built on the killing of nine people in South Carolina. I used to spend time in South Carolina working in, in the South, yeah, in Florence, so that's why I'm close to that town. The killing was done in Charleston, South Carolina. And I remember I was at a church and I said, let's have a memorial service for those that were passed, that were killed. We had a beautiful memorial service and on Sunday I was sitting in the pews and I said, is that it? Nine people died? We got to do more than this. That was one of the reasons the Racial Unity Team came into being. Uh, we wanted to carry on the message of those nine that the killer wanted to start a revolution of hate. We wanted to start a revolution of love. And we define that in so many different ways. So part of the work we do is to promote equity, diversity, inclusion, belonging, and social justice. I mean, that's a tall order. And the work we do in New Hampshire, and we focus on New Hampshire, is to work with schools and educate. The Art and Poetry Challenge is one of those projects. We have several projects, but this is one project that we challenge the kids to think outside the box. And as I was talking to somebody earlier, and to give them a platform so they can showcase what they think about on, on the terms of our society. The other reason that uh, I'm here as well, I'm, I'm a grandfather and I had two kids in the school system. And the superintendent, I looked at the newspaper one day and he said, we do not have a diversity problem. He's right. But the kids need to be aware of what's outside. 
After all, our kids are going to go into a very diverse world. So we have to do something to help them prepare themselves for the world they're going to be facing in. So art and poetry, arts in action, bookshelf diversity are all projects that try to help the teachers. And I know our programs have helped maintain three teachers who are thinking of leaving. So it has helped them because what we do is bring mentors to help. And so what you see today is the work of many hands. I can tell you that I'm not going to even start repeating them because that would be doing a disservice to so many. And I am so thankful for all of you being here today. And I'm especially thankful for the kids that brought their parents. <laughs> You know, I had a kid write to me once and said, I didn't know what equity meant. So I asked Grandma. That kid was, probably had a first time conversation with Grandma about diversity and equity. Grandma got it wrong. <laughs> but the kid got it right on the, and, and, and so the whole idea is to help educate. And that's our mission. You don't see us marching outside, but we work behind the scenes a lot, trying to get the right people in the, uh, School of Board of Education so that we have a more diverse education for our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken, and, th and thanks again to Miriam, who has now joined us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we begin the awards presentation, I want to express on behalf of the Racial Unity Team our deepest gratitude and appreciation to the judges for this contest. Our judges are artists and poets themselves. Now, if I pronounce any names wrong, either now or throughout the day, please forgive me. It just means I care a lot. It's all our poetry judges are Emily Hinoff, Courtney Marshall, Hannah Rubin, Holly Doshbach, and Thomas and Carey. Our visual art judges are Cynthia, Cynthia Velasquez, Mandela Pruitt, Randall Nielsen, Renee Riffroy, Rachel Montroy, Bryn Halsafel, Lila Halsafel, and Kate Farrar. If there's any judges here today, would you please raise your hands? All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. We'd also like to thank our sponsors who have supported us all along the way. Um, Kenny Buck Savings Bank is our official sponsor, which means they support everything we do, all the projects that Ken mentioned. The Nellie May Education Foundation, M&T Bank, Cambridge Trust, and we're also grateful to Concord TV for the media support today. Thank you. Okay, today we celebrate you, artists and poets. Your visual art and poems are here on display outside will travel around the state. The exhibit will go to Portsmouth, Plymouth, Manchester, Amherst, Exeter, and many more public places. This year's theme for the Art and Poetry Challenge asks you to consider a hidden past and move it toward a more inclusive future. We ask you to find a rarely told story and express how bringing it into the light could help us move toward a better future. You are pushing for a better world, and we want to thank each and every one of you. We also want to thank your parents, guardians, family members, teachers, and friends who supported you in your creative expressions. So would all of the poets and artists in the room please stand up so we can give you a round of applause. Thank you very much. We have one more favor to ask of you. After the ceremony is over, would you go back to the gallery and stand by your work and, there, and let people ask you questions and talk about what inspired you to do your particular poem or artwork. We appreciate that very much. Um, now let's give the, out the awards. Some of our winners weren't able to attend today because of previous commitments. So if you hear your name, Please come up and receive your award. First place winners 
will receive a $300 award, second place $200, and third place $100. I'd like to invite Kelly to uh, come up to hand out the awards, and she's here. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's start with the poetry awards. We have winners in the elementary school level, high school, and adult categories. We have one winner in the kindergarten through second grade category. The first place winner is Eleanor Slocum from Exeter for her poem, Excluded. <laughs> we'll, we will hear more from Eleanor a little later. Our Sec, uh, we also have a winner in the grades three to five category. The first place winner is Kaya Rubini from Exeter for her poem, Hopefully. Kaya, uh, Kyra isn't here today. For the high school category, third place winner is Sean Sweeney from Amherst for his poem, Unjust Past, Change Future. Second place winner is Hagen Williams from Hanover High School for his poem, Boxes. And the first place winner is Maya Klo from Bo for her poem, Space Voyager. And we have two winners in the adult category. The second place winner is Todd Warfield from Rochester for his poem, Belmont Barhu. Bar and the first place winner is Rosa Lopez from Hanover for her poem, Storytelling. Congratulations to all our poets. <laughs> now we move on to the Visual Art Award. We have one winner in the kindergarten through second grade category. First place winner is Aria Simpson from Exeter. Aria, Aria also won second place in our 2021 challenge when she was six years old. And, and we have her out, artwork on display out in the gallery as well. So please look, look for Aria's work. Um, we have two winners from third to fifth grade. The second place winner is Vanessa Hurley. And the first place winner is Carol, excuse me, Carla Kerwin from Northampton. For middle school, we have three winners. Third place win winner is Helen Glazer. I know Helen's here. Helen, there's your ribbon. It hit the floor. <laughs> Helen is from Barrington. I'm sorry, Helen's from Jackson. Excuse me. And our second place winner is Tora Williams from Manchester. Tora also won first place in our 2021 challenge. And you can see her artwork in the gallery as well. And our first place winner is Alexia Vasilopoulos. Did I get it close, Alexia? <laughs> there she is. Exeter. Now for the high school category, first we have an honorable mention for a three-dimensional piece, a sculpture created by Eve Libby from Bo. Okay. And, and we also have three winners. Third place winner is Lila Bozek from um, Newmarket. Lila here? Second place winner is Jameson Sensenba. Jameson. 
Jameson is also from Newmarket. And our first place winner is Hanel Vandermeer. And I know I misspelled that one, mispronounced that one. <laughs> and Nell is from Dunmar, going to uh, attending Bow High School. So. We have three adult category winners. Third place winner is Ann Sobel from Milford. <coughs> Our second place winner is James Glick from Thornton. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. One more. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and our first place winner is Gertrude Savage from Aetna. Gertrude also won first place in our 2022 challenge, and that artwork is currently on exhibit in the Hampston Library till the end of June. As, as our art, we've told our artists and poets, we're keeping the work for a year as it travels the state. So we're just finishing up last year's exhibit at the, at the Hampston Library. So congratulations to you all. Hagen, are you in the crowd? Yes. Come on up. Hagen, sir. Thank you. Oh. All right. A surprise visitor. Congratulations. Hagen. Could you, are you, it's okay. Do you want to take it off? You want to take it off? You want, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hagen. Sorry to have overlooked you. I now invite Kelly and Ken to come up for a special recognition award. Me? Are you? I can do it. Go ahead. Do it. I'd love to. I enjoy come back delegating. Later. This is yours. Yeah. All right. For this year's special award, I would like to invite Melissa to come up here, please. Melissa came on board as an intern with the Racial Unity Team for the spring semester, right in the height of getting all of your submissions in and planning for this ceremony. Well before, well before her semester was over, she logged all of her required hours working to improve upon our process and enhancing our ability to expand our thinking, and she continued to see the project through to the end. Her contributions include getting us set up with a virtual gallery so that your work can be seen from anywhere, including professional grade photographs of, of all the artwork this year, expanding our reach to different communities and groups of people for the promotion of the challenge, collecting and providing feedback to each of you from the judging process, greater communication with our artists and poets, assistance with last year's exhibit tour and planning for this year's tour, framing for this year's display, and planning for this year's ceremony. Without her tireless work, above and beyond her internship, we would not have been able to be here and grow this project this year as much as we have. Melissa, your organization, professionalism, feedback, creativity, and heart are deeply valued here. Thank you for learning and growing with us. Racial Unity Team has been grateful for all that you do. somebody every year and uh, we have another professional winner as well so Melissa thank you so much do you want well, to get in the can you kind of yes. <laughs> thank you
Um, now we move to a really special part of the program where we have uh, interviews of some of our winners. Um, Isla Bartenstein will now interview some of them. We're excited to hear your thoughts about your creative expressions. And as I mentioned, Isla is a student at UNH, and she is our new intern with the Racial Unity team. Please welcome Isla. So the first winner that we'd like to hear more from is Eleanor Slocum, who won first prize um, for her poetry. And we would also like for you to read your poem. Do you have a copy of it? Perfect. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> excluded. Friend excluded from soccer because no girls on our team. Girls slick and swift. Boys lions. We both butt heads in a war just for a field. Best team boys and girls together. Blocking, striking, scoring. We win as one. So what um, untold story did you want to tell through your poetry? It's just out of all the girls around the world, I feel like some boys feel like girls aren't strong enough to like fight the cause of kicking the ball and doing all the other stuff that they can do in soccer. <laughs> We would also like to invite Maya Clow, another first place poetry winner, to um, read her poem up here as well. And we and with a pair of headphones in two hands, for loving, communicating, flapping, I load my spaceship and I pack my belongings for space. Ever in a one-person stratosphere with long, long threats that saddle me like wings in case Saturn. Ever in a comet, watching, waiting, listening for someone, anyone. But we don't have to brave space alone, because not so far away there are people with their GPS, with their locators, with their trackers, who grab our hands and lead us back to Earth, who want us on Earth, because there is nothing about us without us. There are people with gentle voices and soft hands and slow calm souls that stop the space voyage to grab us because they want us, because they may not understand us, but they know that above all else that we are human, that we belong on Earth too. So with gentle hands and gentle words, they pull us to Earth. They rescue our head from some space and put them back where they belong. They give us a seat at a table and they wait for the answers. They sit in the deafening silence of the universe, of the stars, never forcing us to be anything more than we are, a quiet being, a quiet present that reassures us, I want you here. Because there is no rushing beauty, there is no rushing the thoughts that fill us up, that w the thoughts that form our gentle fingertips and hair and the stars and the moon and the galaxies. And so they give us a place, a home, dig out a section of earth and create a chair with the leftover wood, ask us questions and give us space to answer, give us galaxies to answer. And when we can't answer, they give us the letters and the words, they give us a place to be instead of a prison of names, of labels, and we thrive. Through letter boards and talking boards and word boards and so many other boards, we can craft the secrets to crafting the stars and the moon. Maybe some of us will never speak. Maybe some of us will speak too much. Maybe some of us will change your life and some of us will change the world. Without teachers who brave space, counselors who search for the recipe to the stars, friends who sit with comets on us, and aides who make the space a bit less scary, without patience and kindness and quiet, you'll never know how to make stars or the moon. So next time, instead of starting with freak, stupid, weird, why not lead with, hey, how are you? piece of poetry. Thank you. What untold story did you want to tell through it? Um, this, talk, this talks about all of the nonverbal autistic people who are constantly looked over because they don't speak and they assume that they must then be mentally incompetent because they cannot communicate in a way that people typically understand. And <laughs> <laughs> 
What would you like to see as the future for the people in your story? I would like people to take more time to listen and see people as a person instead of just seeing the labels that they've been given by society. Thank you so much, Maya. <laughs> person we would like to interview is Alexia Vasilopoulos, who was a first place art winner. Hi Alexia, what did you want to tell through your artwork? I feel like I wanted to talk about the fact that most of the time people in schools don't really talk about the nitty gritty of the past. Um, and the faults that this country has had. Um, and by bringing it to light, you're not only revealing the past, but you're also empowering for the future. <laughs> and what inspired you to tell this story? Um, I noticed that, um, <laughs> you're right, I right, take your time. I noticed that there's so many people out there that don't know the basic facts about what happened in the past. And I think that it's really, really important to know. Thank you so much, Alexia. <laughs> Next, we'd like to interview Anel Vandermeer, who was the first place art winner. Oh, I love you. <laughs> so what was the untold story that you wanted to tell through your artwork? Um, I mostly wanted to talk about um, Tov and Titi um, from their tech, their Finnish. Oh gosh, I'm braining so hard right now. <laughs> um, basically, uh, they started getting together in 19 in the 1950s when in Finland that was like being lesbian in their instance wasn't socially acceptable. So they sort of had to hide their love and their care about one another in um, Tov specifically. She created um, this comic called The Moomins that actually received national recognition in Finland from her, which is really awesome. But um, she sort of hid um, in, within her story these uh, two characters called Thing Gummy and Bob that had a secret little suitcase and it had a treasure in it that they never showed anyone except for each other, which she sort of used as a way to express her love for Titi in a sort of secret little way. And um, recently it has become more, they've become more open about it, but unfortunately they weren't be able to be open about it until three years after Tove died. And so, yeah. And what you, drew you to this story in particular? Um, I honestly don't really know what sort of drew me to it. I think it was partially because of like the whole tragedy of the aspect of where they weren't able to sort of show that they cared about each other. Um, but I think it's also it's also a little bit hopeful because um, it wasn't like the like after like the whole country found this thing out because they what they ended up doing was um, uh, Titi made a whole like movie series about it and she posted it. Um, it's called uh, Tove and Titi in Europe. It's about their little journey through that. It's uh, it's a documentary. It's very cute. And um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and um, I guess sort of like the sort of aspect of. Tove not being able to be open about it until like after her death is just really sad and I wish that would have been different. Thank you so much, Adele. <laughs> Next we have Tora Williams who won second place for her art. Tora, what story did you choose to tell through your art? Um, mine is actually kind of similar to Eleanor's. It's like, it's, it's gender equality and it's supposed to be like, come on guys, we're equal. We can, we can do things like the same. We, we don't have to fight about things. So what would you like to see as the future for the people in your story? Um, sorry, um, I feel like we don't have to be so dramatic about things. I mean, we, we have problems, we do, but... <laughs> um, I feel like we just, we just need to talk. We need to like, we, we just, I'm so sorry. You're breathing so well. I know. <laughs> okay, um, I, 
<laughs> I feel like we we really just we really need to work on things. We need to understand that we like we both we both have differences like with the genders and we both like we have problems, we do. But we all we can get along, we can do things the same, but you know, obviously have our differences and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. like to interview Jim Glegg who won second place in the adult art category. We actually have his piece up here and it will be on display in the gallery after this. Um, so Jim. This is a beautiful piece. What story does it tell? Uh, may I? Oh thank you. Uh, well the, the story is basically about what happens around us? What comes from disasters? We've all experienced disasters in our life where we've had people come in and help us. Uh, recent events were all the hurricanes that have happened. Um, people from all over the country went down to the sites and helped rebuild. Out of a pile of sticks, which are all different types of wood that I use commonly. Um, they're all wood, but they're all different. Each piece has its own characteristics. So why not look at that as opposed to saying, oh, they're different, I'm not gonna use them. No, they all work together. And when we come together, hence together we can make a difference. From a pile of sticks, we come together and we create something that's beautiful and useful. Uh, all the wood is in its natural state, which is what we should all be in. Because naturally, each person is beautiful. You don't need to be polished or sanded or have a glossy finish to be beautiful. You're beautiful the way you are. And that's what having the unfinished wood tells you. You get to see all the green, all the, the, the natural colors of the wood, the imperfections. Don't hide them. That's what makes you beautiful. And that's where this piece came to be. Because out of what we see as chaos, something beautiful can happen when we come together. Thank you, Isla, and thank you for all the winners who are willing to be interviewed today, um, and especially to Eleanor and Maya for reading your poems. Okay, now we have some special words to, before we open the exhibit. We have asked Jen Markman Rood, an artist and teacher of some of our past and current winners, to say a few words about what it means to participate in the Art and Poetry Challenge. everybody and thank you again for coming. It means so much to me and my students to have your support in celebrating the hard work and creating this beautiful art and poetry for us to all enjoy. Let's give one more round of applause for all of the participants in this challenge again please. <laughs> my name is Jen Markmanrood and I am a former teacher of Bow High School. I'm here to talk to you about the importance of this challenge and how it's shaped mine and my students lives. I have been doing this Art and Poetry Challenge with my students for three years now. Each year there are new prompts and each year it makes my students and I think in a new way. It was my second year in teaching when the prompt was The Hill We Climb. For those of you who don't know, this was the inauguration poem for Joe Biden given by the incredibly talented Ormanda Gorman. Since then, her work has been challenged by schools. It's been taken away from students because it wasn't deemed appropriate for young people. Although it was written by a young woman of color whose intention was to make others like her feel seen and represented in our history. So three years ago, way before that situation happened in Florida, I asked my students to team up and collaborate on a piece of art to visualize an, an overarching concept or idea that they came up with based on Ormanda Gorman's poem. At this point in time, I knew that I was taking a chance. 
to ask my students to actually take the time to educate themselves on how radical it is for a person like Armanda Goran to be giving the inaugurational speech for our new president, and then to make art about it was a lot to ask of these high school students in, a very, in an entry level art class at that. It was also something that I had to be afraid of as an educator, especially because of the new laws that were put into place um, about di teaching diverse concepts in the state of New Hampshire pri prior to my becoming a teacher. But I made sure throughout this process to let students fully express themselves, to ask questions, and to have meaningful conversations with each other in the class. What came out of it was beautiful. They realized that just creating art was helping. They could make a tiny bit of change by sharing their thoughts and their creative expression. And even more, they were able to display the artwork to a large amount of people. With each year came new prompts, students, challenges, and conversations. It quickly became my favorite part of the semester. It was my favorite part of the semester because students were often shocked by the open platform that I gave them to express themselves. Their su the surprise look on their face would say it all when I just didn't judge them for the questions that they asked or the ideas that they had. A lot of them were initially hesitant to openly express themselves in a world f filled with set guidelines, expectations, judgments, politics, and rules. Sound familiar? <laughs> but that's what the arts are all about, freedom of expression. There is no right or wrong in art because it's personal to you and it's personal to your expressions and your experiences. In a world with um, so much technology advancement and a lack of wealth distribution, we are all struggling. We're struggling to connect with one another because we're all accustomed to doing that in different ways. Our grandparents talk to each, uh, walk to each other's houses to talk to each other. Our parents were contacted by phone and by email. I was being brought up at the same time that a cell phone was being brought up. I was able to see all of that. But these kids, they were born with technology in their hands. They had access to everything. And that became scary, and it is. But also, think about it. Think about all of the beautiful art that they have on their screens. The images, the graphics, the music, songs, words. Yes, your child might be playing a violent video game sometimes on their smartphone, but the artists and animators to create these things are very talented graphic designers as well. I too hate AirPods and ears while I'm talking, but how awesome is it the accessibility to different music, culture, and literature in just a small earbud? This has caused a huge shift in the way that students appreciate the arts. This year, the question to my students was, what does an inclusive future look like to you? For some, this was a very hard question. For others, the answer is very simple, because they're constantly thinking about the struggles that they're facing in their life, the struggles that others have, the planet, the ways that they want to make change or change their own lives, but oftentimes, they're not acting on anything because they're a high school student, and that's understandable. But you know what isn't a hard question is to ask them what makes you mad. What upsets you? In talking about problems that you or someone you know face, what makes you mad? Think about the people, the situation, and how that could be resolved with everybody leaving happy. That's an inclusive future. So the work that my students have created covered many of the most common social issues, but they also covered many personal and individualized concepts, ideas, and forms of expression. I could not possibly express to you how proud I am of the work that they have put into it and all of the work they've created. Now as I finish time, up my time at Bow High School, I do not plan on taking a step back from this at all. I do want the complete freedom to express myself in art the way that I encourage my students to do. Because right now we are seriously in need of art more than ever. We need to encourage people to express themselves and stand up for what they believe in. Let the good people be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. You can see what an inspiration she must be to her students. Um, this concludes our ceremony. Um, thank you for coming to celebrate the power of the arts to change, to bring about social change. And please help yourself to refreshments and enjoy the exhibit. Thank you.